In this video, we are going to talk about contract-first API development and enabling Knative in CamelK. Contract-first, it lets teams to easily develop in parallel and knowing what to expect up front. We start by establishing a contract between teams and come up with a common industrial standard language agnostic API specification. It is an API description format for the modern RESTful API calls. It's either written in the form of YAML or JSON. The developer then takes this document and then produce an application based on what's written in the contract. CamelK is a sub-project of Apache Camel, therefore it has all the goodness of Apache Camel, such as having access to hundreds of building components that allows developer to reuse without rewriting the code. This exercise is to create an API endpoint for users to store, update, or delete object to an external object data store, like Amazon S3. First, we will design the API with a tool called Epicurio that allows user to design a specification with ease and using a GUI interface. So CamelK will use a pre-built AWS S3 component to build the custom route and apply the integration logic, such as transforming the format of the data, filtering it, or even adding extra input into the data to the external services. And take the API design that was created before, CamelK will then combine both and then generate, connect, and deploy the RESTful endpoint on your Kubernetes OpenShift environment. Let's head to Epicurio. I'm not going to ask you to start from scratch. There is an existing open API spec in your working directory. We're going to just import that document into the editor. The studio at the Epicurio studio can help you quickly visualize what's going on in a much more human readable way. You can see all the path that was available for a client to call and also the method that's or operation that's available for on each path. And you can also see the details of each request and response. Here I'm going to demonstrate how to design by creating a path that lists all the object in the object store. We're going to define a get operation with operation ID name list. And then also defining the response, like the type of data in the response or the structure of the data in the response. And in this case, it's an array of strings. We can now download the document from the editor as a YAML file, then open it up and replace it with the existing one. Notice this one contains a new path that will list all the files that's available in the generic object store. And now we're ready to move on, connecting to the S3 bucket. In this example, you don't have to have an Amazon account. There's an alternative way to do this by spinning up a Minio server as the object store. Since I already have an account, let's go ahead with using the actual S3 bucket. Here is a quick list of what you should already have or set up. If you have doubt, please go back to my previous video for more information. In the workspace, open up the didact instructions and locate the api.java file. We are using the Amazon S3 component in the application. CamelK will include all the libraries to access this service, and you can control and configure the query options by appending it to the URI. See, this is an empty Amazon S3 bucket. Coming back to the application, we're using the pre-built S3 component to store and retrieve the object from Amazon S3 object store and use different operations by configuring it to the URI. You can match the operation ID in the design doc and the direct URI in the camel route to point the defined API to the actual camel integration. We can now inject the credentials and the configuration from a property file. Make sure you have a valid Amazon Web Service Developer account and then obtain the secrets and the access key and also make sure you enter the right bucket name and location. And again, follow instructions to see if you have correctly installed and set up everything. Here we have a new namespace called Camel API and have a Camel operator already installed in the namespace. Also, if you don't have Amazon S3, make sure you have a Mimeo service up and running. Now, let's go ahead and start CamelK application. Take a look at the command line, and you'll find there's two important configurations. 
The first one is pointing it to an open API specification doc, and it tells Camel where to locate and load the details of the REST service. Another one is the property file. It points to the configuration of the S3 component. It was kept as an external configuration so it can be changed or update for a different environment or for other purposes. When you give CamelK all this information, CamelK will automatically combine and process what was given and generate the RESTful endpoint, and also direct the request to its matching Camel route. And it will also create a Kubernetes service pointing to the Camel endpoint as well as the route that we can access externally. In addition, we also added the path for users to access the OpenAPI specification. Click in the route and add the context path to the route and you will have access to the same document that you feed into the CamelK operator. Now I'm going to follow the instructions and upload the api.java file to the object store. You can see the object now, which I name it to example, is in the data store. And if you download it and open it, you'll see the content in the example object is the same as what we have in the java api.java file. Try to do the same to test the other endpoints. Okay now, it's time to go serverless with Knative. Knative is a building block extended from Kubernetes. It offers developer a better way to work with Kubernetes by automatically takes care of the deployment, traffic routing, on-demand scaling or sizing, and connecting to the event ecosystem. Developer no longer have to be responsible for creating configuration templates to define how their application should be deployed or even predict the load. Knative simplifies lots of steps for developers to deploy their applications on the cloud, such as pointing it to the right re revision for deployments and most importantly, introduce scaling to zero and scale up for load for resource optimization. So how does CamelK and Knative work together to benefit from the serverless goodness. Well, developing Knative is easy, but CamelK takes it to another level. When you work with CamelK, it automatically detects if Knative is available in your cluster, and it will automatically deploy your application as a Knative service, and also with its ingress, along with creating a revision or, or also a Knative route. And you also have the freedom to switch between serverless or just normal deployment with just one single configuration. So in our example, we're going to turn our API service into a serverless application and have it scale down to zero if no traffic comes in. But first, we need to install Knative into our cluster. Well, it's very simple with Operator Hub in OpenShift. I will install Red Hat's versions of Knative serving, it's called Red Hat Serverless. And since this is a HTTP endpoint, we'll only install the Knative serving part. Looks like the Knative operator is up. Now let's go ahead and set up Knative serving. Basically, it's just setting the config for scaling, such as determine the load, if it's by concurrent requests or CPU usage, the sampling windows, or the telemetry setting set trust. Now let's head back to the workspace and run the same command and start up CamelK again. Since now we have Knative in our cluster, CamelK detects it, and instead of creating the normal Kubernetes service and route to deploy, it creates Knative service, and in the developer view, you can see that it's now starting up as a Knative service. After a while without any service coming into the service, Knative will scale the running instance or pod to zero. Now there's nothing running. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and wake it up by calling this API. Follow the didact instructions and call the REST endpoint. So now you can see the request has come in and the pod has come back up again. In summary, I have shown you how to feed existing OpenAPI spec to CamelK and link it to a Camel route and deploy it as a working RESTful endpoint without much coding. And I also briefly introduced Knative Serving and how CamelK can work on both Kubernetes and Knative. And last but not least, I have shown you how to run CamelK as a Knative service and demonstrate the scaling down capability. That's all. Thank you.